In May of 1974, a great new version of a grand old sport broke loose with fury and finesse upon the professional sports scene. Pro lacrosse, the ultimate development of a sport that began hundreds of years ago when it was created by the Indian tribes of North America. Some historians say the original game called Bagataway was a form of combat training played by teams numbering anywhere from 5 to 1,000 players. Others think it was part of a religious ceremony, and still others think it was played merely for the fun of the fight. The uniform was fairly standard, bare feet and breech cloth. The field size ranged from 50 yards to three miles in length, and the rules varied from tribe to tribe. Length of play, an hour and a half to three days. In those early years, the players used small sticks with leather thonged pockets. But over the years, the racket or stick was refined, as was the game itself, and lacrosse popularity grew. 1868 marked the first Canadian championships. By 1912, American teams were flourishing. Lacrosse was becoming a modern game with modern rewards. Today, lacrosse trophies adorn walls of hundreds of colleges, universities, high schools, and private clubs. Yet for all this change in the sport, the lacrosse stick is still traditionally fashioned by hand. In a special steaming oven, the stick blank is heated and softened. Next, it is carefully bent and shaped in the classic form. And then the shaped stick is clamped and allowed to dry. When thoroughly dried and set, the stick is sanded to a fine, smooth finish the entire process taking a trained eye, skill, and patience. Finally, the stick is drilled and threaded with gut and leather thong to be woven into a strong and durable net. Every handmade stick carries the special mark of its maker. No two are exactly alike. Today, after hundreds of years of change, the stick is ready for the pros and their faster, higher scoring game, pro lacrosse. The Professional National Lacrosse League was created in 1974. In its first season, the kind of rivalry that usually takes years to appear in most sports developed almost instantly between the Maryland Arrows and the Philadelphia Wings. Here in the first season playoffs, all the speed, endurance, and brilliant individualism that characterizes pro lacrosse was wrapped up in one crucial game. The intense action that makes Arrows Pro Lacrosse particularly exciting reached fever pitch. With each Arrows goal, the fans screamed for more and got it. In that first summer season, novice Pro Lacrosse fans learned that this game offers far more than the usual spectator sport. Pro Lacrosse is a hard-hitting, rough-and-tumble game that demands the best from every player. The Arrows didn't win the nation's cup in that first National Lacrosse League season, but during their first year, they won something a lot more important. They won the respect and the loyalty of a new kind of fan for a new kind of sport. The Maryland Arrows were off and running. Metropolitan Washington's Capitol Center is the Arrows' home astroturf, and when it's game night, the fans start arriving well before the sun goes down. The 17,500 seats begin to fill up with Arrows fans. And while they flood the ticket windows and concession stands, below them, in the Arrows locker room, the players are making their own preparations. Everybody in the place is getting ready. Both the players and the fans are going to see a lot of action tonight, a lot of tough, hard play. Minor injuries rarely keep a lacrosse player on the bench. Everybody's determined to see action. Throughout the Capitol Center, the tempo increases. There's the feeling of anticipation, the stir of excitement. And then they're out on the floor. Warm up, a chance to loosen up, shake out the tension, and start using up the adrenaline that's flowing. Tonight, the Arrows are going up against the Montreal Quebecois. In addition to Maryland and Montreal, there are four other teams in the National Lacrosse League, the Philadelphia Wings, the Quebec Caribou, the Long Island Tomahawks, and the Boston Bolts. It's a young league. Every team is tough and unpredictable, and no two games ever look alike. Each lacrosse game is the payoff for years of intense training. 
Tonight's game will demand incredible stamina, speed, and skill from every man on the floor. And the kind of know-how these guys started getting as soon as they were old enough to hold a stick. The end of the warm-up period means that game time is just minutes away. The arrows head for the locker room. And even the crowd takes a minute to catch its breath. Because the fans know that during the next 60 minutes, they're going to lose their voices. The arrows take advantage of one of the few breaks they'll get all night. They share one thought, win. Late arrivals are still buying seats, knowing full well they may not sit in them all night, as the fastest team on 12 feet comes out to keep them screaming. Every fan's attention is focused directly beneath the Capitol Center's huge telescreen closed circuit TV system. The last arrows enter the player's box. The face-off is to lacrosse what the jump ball is to basketball. The object of the game is deceptively simple. At top speed, pass the ball from man to man and throw it past the opposing goaltender into his goal. Score, one point. There are a few catches. You have to watch for defensive moves like cross-checks, aggressive and effective. Slashing can draw a penalty, but sometimes doesn't. Defense is a one-on-one -on -one game most of the time, and on a floor 200 feet by 85 feet, that can mean a lot of traveling. Even from the stands, you can almost feel the kind of contact sport this is. Pro lacrosse has taken the best action of other sports and given it new dimension. The tough body contact of hockey, set in a higher scoring game. The pivots, picks, rolls, and screens of basketball in a harder hitting game. The long bomb of football in a virtually non-stop game. And the moves all pay off. There are 20 players suited up on each team, six men on the floor at a time. Penalties are imposed by putting the offending player or players in the penalty box for periods up to 10 minutes. The non-stop aspect of the game allows team members to move on and off the floor without stopping play, known in lacrosse lingo as changing on the go. That way, the action never really stops until the end of a period. And even then, pro lacrosse has a better way, because halftime has something extra. Instead of one show, you get two. Lacrosse action is composed of three 20-minute periods, so you get two intermissions. You might see a traditional marching band show, or a karate demonstration, or gymnastic exhibition. Or, because lacrosse fans are really fans, another lacrosse game. A preliminary game played by two of the increasing number of youth lacrosse clubs, which reflect the growing interest in lacrosse in the Washington-Baltimore area. They might be school teams or teams from the Metro Area Lacrosse League. Coached and supported by the Maryland Arrows, it's the first amateur box lacrosse league in the area. And then it's back to pro lacrosse action. The face-off is set, and the Arrows are back to play. When the Arrows play at the Capitol Center, every fan tries to be there. And when the game goes on the road, fans follow the action by listening to Dick Trotter's play-by-play -play over the Maryland Arrows radio and TV networks. That's Bruce Arena working into the Arrow zone, into the corner against Guy Cody. Spins, looking in front, the pass to John McKenna. McKenna took the shot, and Thomas made a good save on the short side. Bill Bradley looks down four for Suckett. The Arrows' leading scorer plays it off the board and front the Blair Cavalry scores! It's summer's most exciting sports bargain. And once you've seen the Arrows play, you just can't stay away. Maryland Arrows Pro Lacrosse. Bet you can't watch just one. <laughs>